Everyone, how you doing? Long time no see. It's been a while since I uh, turned on the camera, hopped on here, and started babbling like I always do about records. But uh, I went on a vacation. So when you go on vacation, you gotta save up for three or four weeks or so. So that, for me, that meant no vinyl digging for three or four weeks. I didn't go to record stores for that amount of time to save to go to my trip. My trip was the same as it was last year. I went to Hollywood, California um, to visit you know, Hollywood, Malibu, L taking the sights to LA, but also to hit the great record stores that are out there as well amongst a lot of activities I planned for myself. Um, so I visited all the great stores there, and plus taking the sights, and it was a great vacation. It was a great getaway. I went there for three days and had a blast. Uh, much like I did last year. And like last year, I visited the uh, Amoeba store in Hollywood, Amoeba Music. And that was just an awesome experience, just like it was last year. That store is fantastic. Um, just the selection in there blows your mind. The size of it blows your mind. The uh, posters and memorabilia and rare records they have on the walls of this, throughout the store is uh, things that you can only see online, track down online on eBay or Amazon and there it is in a store right in front of you. All you have to do is just ask for it and pay for it in stores. And the, the vinyl selection, much the same way. Stuff that I can only find online were right there in the shelves just for the taking. Um, Amoeba is somewhat high price on some items, the, basically the items that you want. <laughs> Uh, so you're gonna drop a lot of cash there, so hence I had to save for a few weeks and not vinyl dig for a few weeks So I could just go ass crazy in that place and I did and this time it was kind of nice digging in Amoeba because I went there on a Tuesday and they had an in-store uh, concert uh, inside the store a local a legendary local uh, folk acoustic folk music band called the Weebies were doing their CD launch in the store and uh, selling their album on vinyl and CD at the show the band uh, signed signed it for their many fans <laughs> The band sounded great, good acoustic music, wonderful harmonies. It was really nice to be a part of that. And, and though I had never heard of the band, you know, I was digging while listening to their show and oh, it was such a nice, peaceful experience to hear while you were digging. Uh, they really sounded amazing and the atmosphere there was fantastic. Such a positive atmosphere, just music lovers. Uh, just geeking out over you know the band playing live and all the wonderful music you could find in the shelves. So, needs to say, going to Amoeba was a lot of fun. So here I am, about to show you how I went broke in Amoeba. <laughs> I got one of these, the second of one of my Amoeba handbags. Uh, when you spend stupid dollars in the store like I did, they throw in one of these for free. So at least I got something free from Amoeba. So this is the second. <laughs> handbag from Amoeba I got. And uh, let's go to the digs here, shall we? Let's see what what broke me. Uh, when I went there last year, I was amazed at how many cool uh, Dream Theater records I was able to buy there, able to find. And this year was no different. Uh, I go there to uh, stock up on my Dream Theater collection. So I got Score from Dream Theater. Uh, four record set, live recording, uh, marking the band's 20th anniversary tour. Um, I, I believe this came out a few months ago or so. I have never seen it on a, at a store. It's a music on vinyl release. There's a sticker. Um, I saw a few people here at the VC and VC Facebook show it. And ever since I saw that, I wanted to get my own copy. 
uh, saw that you could order online. It was real expensive. Um, I have the DVD from this concert uh, that came out a few years ago. You, a few years back, I think 2010 or nine, or probably even later. I really don't remember. Um, and uh, the 20th anniversary tour made a great DVD. So having it on vinyl is actually really nice. Band plays with a with a um, orchestra, so really cool. And here's the gatefold that shows off the band and the orchestra. This is recorded in New York City, Radio City Music Hall. There's the gatefold that shows the band playing with the orchestra. Really nice photo, really really beautiful looking gatefold. I really dug that when I first saw it. When I first opened it, like, oh wow. <laughs> and like I said, four record set. It's the uh, whole show that appeared on the DVD, now on four albums, so really cool. And they have these nice custom labels, Dream Theater score. They all, all records have the same label, so I'll just show you just the one. Uh, I listened to most of this. I think I only skipped one side, actually. I only skipped one side. So I li listened to most of this album. It sounds great on vinyl. So this was a big, big addition to my Dream Theater collection, which mostly came from Amoeba. <laughs> Interesting enough. And yeah, I'm having trouble putting this up deal with that later and here we go and we it did come with an insert a paper insert nothing really special it just shows you all the credits band names and credit member names and credits and all that all that fancy stuff so this was a really great find I was really happy to pull this one out I was hoping to see this one there and uh, it's just so you know you're going to see it there. <laughs> it's I mean, it was that store where if you can't find it anywhere else and you really don't want to pay for it online because you know the shipping's going to kill you. And if you can afford to go to Hollywood, <laughs> if I had to drive to it, but it wasn't that expensive for me. And this was the next best thing, of course, you could take in the site. So really cool addition to the Dream Theater uh, collection. Uh, I think the only thing I, I'm missing is Dream Theater's very first album, When Dreams and Day Unite. Um, I'm scared if I find that one, because I know that's going to be an expensive fucking album to buy. And it's not really my favorite Dream Theater album either, so... I may stop right here with Dream Theater, unless they release a new album on vinyl, then I'll most likely get that one, but... Pretty much got all the Dream Theater albums I was hoping to get. Uh, one last Dream Theater here, though. This was one I was also missing and glad to have it now. And it is Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence, studio record from Dream Theater. This is also a uh, music on vinyl release. Real nice. I can't say this is my favorite Dream Theater album, though it's not bad, but it's not my favorite one. Um, so it's not their best. But there are some good songs on it that I really like. I think the one I really like is a song called Blind Faith. I really love Blind Faith on this album. And um, the whole Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence concept part, uh, which takes up two sides of the record, sides three and four, this is a two record set. I like most of it. Uh, the overture I don't really like, but they play it live here with the orchestra sounds a lot better um, about to crash not bad war inside my head the chest is something all really cool uh, good night kiss not bad solitary shell was always good and of course losing time in the grand finale uh, probably my favorite there's also a song here called the glass prison which I think is badass unfortunately like dream theater it just goes on too long but anyway like I said, not their best album, but some good ideas on it, some solid music on it. So not bad at all. There's the gatefold. So really nice. I believe this came out in 2001 or 2002. I think it was the year on this one. Not really. I can't really. <laughs> don't quote me on those years. I don't really remember. I'm just going off of memory. Here's the uh, here's the paper insert. Put a band picture on it. In the back is the lyrics and all the credits. Also on custom labels, all the records look pretty much alike. So there we go, there's the custom label for both sides of record one. So, and this is like I said, two record set. 
Um, I don't know why I picked Dream Theater <laughs> uh, to be the one band I always get at Amiibo because their stuff is always there and it, it, I avoid having to pay shipping costs online even though it costs money to ship myself to Hollywood. <laughs> Uh, it's still worth it. Still worth it, and I always look forward to it. Um, really awesome album, and their Dream Theater selection is fucking killer. There's so many good albums in that, just in the just in the Dream Theater section of the shelves. It's better than any store I've ever been in my life. So, and I, and I visit some nice vinyl stores in Sacramento and Berkeley, and it's amazing how Hollywood just blows them all away. Because the, the regular stores I go to are nothing to sneeze at. So <laughs> there we go. All right, so that'll do it for Dream Theater. Uh, I actually did buy records from other bands, believe it or not. <laughs> Let's start showing those off from ELO, Electric Like Orchestra Live. I really don't know the year on this one. I really can't make it out because of my old ass eyes and the tiny printing. So maybe early 2000s, I believe. But nice artwork on this. I really like. I mean, the last year or so, I've, I've been collecting a bit more of ELO's vinyl. And uh, there's a band, of course, a band you always hear on classic rock radio, so you don't really pay much attention because classic rock play, plays them all the time. Radio plays them all the time. But um, once I started collecting the vinyl, I realized how great, how great the songwriting was in this band. There's the gatefold, really cool looking gatefold as well. I listened to this whole thing, and I swear to God, it's a two-record set, and the, the time went by so quickly listening to this because I love these songs, and they sound great live, even though Jeff Lynn admitted he's more of a studio guy than a live guy. Um, nice custom labels on these as well to, to, to match the artwork on the covers, so really beautiful artwork on the labels as well, a really a really well produced live record. All the classic songs sound amazing on this album. I've only listened to it once because I only got back in town a couple days ago. So I hadn't had a chance to really listen to it fully. I gave it one good listen and I'm telling you that was a that was a fun day in the music room. And record two, same level, same label as the front, the first one. So great live album. I uh, was really happy to pick this up. I believe there's a bootleg floating around on the internet where it comes with two records and a, and a, and a DVD. I wish that were the case here. This is just the two live records, but it's the official release. And it sounds great. Absolutely great. For a live recording, this sounds really, really good. Uh, I don't know if they were touched up later in the studio. <laughs> Possibly, but for, like I said, for a live record, this sounds amazing. So really happy with this with that buy that was a good that was a great find a great find so really happy to find that one this is something that's been on my radar for a long time and now i finally found it in a store so i was really happy to find this it's a mobile fidelity sound lab pressing of in excess x a really cool record uh, i have the mofi pressing of in excess's kick so this is a great piece to go along with that. Here's the gatefold. This came out early 90s, I believe, or or 1989 actually. No, 1990s when it came out. And uh, and to hear this on a MoFi pressing, it just sounds great. It, it sounds amazing. <laughs> I spun this when I came home and I just was floored by how much better it sounds than my my other used copies of this album. I have two used copies of this album, so I really love this album. And it just blows, it just blows in my way, <laughs> as you would expect from a Mofi pressing. There we go, I'll take it out of the insert here. There's the silver label, Mofi pressing of X, NXS. Huge upgrade in sound quality. Oh my God, does this sound awesome. Um, I don't have a lot of MoFi pressings, maybe five or six or so, and all of them sound amazing. So if I do find these particular pressings in stores, and it's an album I've always loved, it's an automatic grab for me. 
yeah, they're expensive. This one was like $35 or something like that, but to me it was worth it because I love this album, man. This is a huge, huge audio upgrade. Another MoFi pressing I, I found out there. And this one I'm glad I found because I saw a few people in the VC show this and I was instantly jealous and wanted one too. <laughs> and now I have one. It's from The Pretenders, Learning to Crawl, a MoFi pressing of this album. I think the album originally came out in 82 or 83. Um, and there's the back cover, really cool. Haven't spun this one yet, can't wait to do it. Because there's so many good songs on here. Middle of the, middle of the Road, Back on the Chain Gang, um, Time the Avenger, my, my City Was Gone, uh, 2,000 Miles, Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Some great songs on this album. So, real happy to now have it uh, on a MoFi pressing. And here's the gatefold. That includes all the band pictures. Really good era of the band. This was a good record for the Pretenders, so real glad. I got a MoFi pressing of it. I had an old used copy, uh, which I've had since I joined the VC. So I'm sure this one will more than blow it away. Like I said, I haven't spun this one yet. I can't wait to put this on the turntable. This one doesn't have the silver label on it, the black label, but it has silver writing. Uh, lettering on it. There we go. Learning to crawl, pretenders, mofi pressing. This was a huge, huge find for me. Ever since I've seen a few people show it off in the VC, uh, it was on the it was on the wish list. <laughs> I had to have this. I don't know if I want to call it a grail. I suppose you could, even though I had a used copy of it already. This was just one of those things I felt like I had to have. So thank you Amoeba for just having it in stock. <laughs> Being thoughtful enough to have it in stock for me to come by and snatch it in a heartbeat. I mean, yeah, a little, like I say, MoFi pressings are a little pricey, but once you spin it, you know where that extra money goes because they sound great. So real glad to put this in the collection. That was a big find, very big find. Okay, a couple of Genesis bootlegs. Uh, if you're an Amoeba, there seems to be a strong uh, demand for Genesis bootlegs and Amoeba for some reason because I saw a lot of them in the Genesis section on the shelves. Uh, couldn't grab all of them. Some of them I had before already, either on vinyl or on CD. Uh, but I didn't have this one. This one is called uh, Chloe in the Garden, bootleg from Life Bootleg from Genesis. This is uh, recorded at the Rainbow Theater in London in 1973. Not much, uh, just a plain white label, as you can see, so nothing extravagant there. <laughs> but a, a decent live recording. At first it sounds like the soundtrack uh, from the Genesis in Concert video from uh, 73, Shepard and Studios. It sounds a lot like that, but if, if you stick with the songs, you realize they are different from those recordings. Because uh, at first that's what I thought I had here. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, that's from a video they did in 73. And they, but if you listen to it, uh, you do you do hear the differences. So this is actually from the Rainbow Theater. Side one, we have Watchers of the Skies, Dancing with the Moonlit Night, I Know What I Like, and uh, Firth of Fifth. Side two, we have Supper's Ready, and the int well, first the introduction to Supper's Ready, and then the song Supper's Ready. Takes up all of side two, because that's quite a lengthy song. <laughs> So, really cool bootleg. Um, at first, I was disappointed, like I said, because I thought it was the Shepherd and Studios audio. Uh, but, you know, I start listening to it and uh, realize it is different from that. And this was actually an enjoyable bootleg. Um, I, it has a mono sound to it, uh, but it does sound really good. And once you, once your ears get listed, because when you buy bootlegs, you realize, you gotta realize that there's gonna be uh, some it's not gonna be the best audio quality recording but once your ears get used to that uh, it does deliver and, and sounds great and the other genesis bootleg i got was from uh, the lamb lays down on broadway tour and the record the bootleg record is called uh genesis swelled and spent and this is the entire lamb lays down on broadway show album done live put on two bootleg records 
There we go. There's the back of it. Kind of make like it looks just like the <laughs> like the uh, actual album when they on Broadway. There's no gatefold. Two record set. Um, I forgot the name of the uh, the record label. I think it's Grand Records. I'm not really sure, but you know the labels are just these cartoon character labels, as you can see here. So <laughs> not the best sounding bootleg I've ever heard. Uh, but you realize they're recording something from the early 70s, so you gotta keep that in mind. But it is, but they did capture a great show. And get another strange cartoon picture from the labels. <laughs> Same thing on the other side. It was still a good bootleg though, and really glad I bought it. I remember the guy who was ringing me up at the register just about freaked out when he saw this, like, oh wow, this is a classic. This, this record really stood out to him. He obviously must be a Genesis fan, or just a fan of the album. Um, but, you know, it, I thought I was done buying Genesis bootlegs, <laughs> to be honest with you, because you can only listen to Birth the Fifth and Suffer's Ready so many times on a bootleg. But these are ones, they're, they're real popular Genesis bootlegs, and I never see this in any store, so. It really made me want to jump on it, uh, even though it's not the best quality sound-wise, uh, but it's a really valuable Genesis bootleg, so I'm happy I have it. Being the big Genesis fan I am, I could put up with, I could put up with the audio. <laughs> and speaking of Genesis, I got a Phil Collins album here. This one's really special, though. Uh, his second solo album, Hello, I Must Be Going, but this is a Japanese pressing with the uh, OV strip. Um, some slight wear on the cover, but not bad. Pretty good find. I just never, I just never seen it with the Obi strip before. And of course, there's the photo montage in the gatefold. A lot of personal photos from Phil during that time he made this album. Uh, it does have the original insert, like the any used record you could find of this. Uh, I'll just show you that real fast. There we go. Here, there's the insert. And a custom label with uh, Phil, Phil's handwriting, doing all the album titles and credits and album name and so. <laughs> Last time Phil did anything with a custom label on his records. And because it's the Japanese copy, it comes with the Japanese uh, insert. There we go. So, never seen this in a store before. Never seen this period before. Didn't even know it existed, actually. And of course the back is just the lyrics to all the songs, nothing special. One of my favorite albums from Phil, uh, I Don't Care Anymore, The West Side, I Cannot Believe It's True, You Can't Hurry Love. Uh, some, some great songs on this album, Do You Know, Do You Care. Uh, every time Phil gets blasphemed by anyone online or in public within my ears, I'm always out there to defend how good of an artist and songwriter he was and musician and superb drummer. So. <laughs> Nothing but love for Phil, and uh, to find a Japanese press with a strip on it, really nice find. And from the same album, I found a maxi single, 12 inch maxi single for the song uh, I Don't Care Anymore. I've never seen this before either. I thought it was a cool find for a couple bucks, that's all they wanted for it. And what attracted me was the uh, B side tracks on this. And you can see it's on the WEA label. Oh, it's the wrong way. And the extra live tracks they have on here is Don't Let Him Steal Your Heart Away and So To F are the two extra live tracks that are on the B side. So this was a cool find. This was something very rare from Phil Collins. So I was happy to score this. So, so good addition to the Phil Collins um, collection. All right, this is cool because this is something I thought I would never find in America and it's Triumph's very first album on Attic Records. <laughs> Their very first solo, al uh, solo, very first studio album. And there's a picture of the guys with a hot chick kicking back on the couch. <laughs> um, had this record before, um, Spud Boy sent me this and he had it signed by Gil Moore to me, so as VCLT. And I thought, well, this is probably the only way I'm going to find this album. Uh, but, and then all of a sudden, there it is, sitting in the shelves at, at Amoeba. And I was like, wow. Because 
and that's why I snatched it up because it's, it's just so hard to find even though I already had a copy of it also on Attic Records had to pick it up just for the this, just because it's so rare and nearly impossible to find in this in America this this copy of Transverse Records so, so, so I got one copy that's autographed by Gilmore and then one I found used at a store here in the US that's that's something uh, not easily done <laughs> trust me uh, so Triumph's first album this was a huge find huge Let's keep it moving here uh, another 12 inch single uh, this was from Tesla the song getting better Tesla they're from my region they're from the bands from Sacramento when I used to live in Sacramento I was amazed to see the guys hanging out in the rock bar, the rock music bars around town. I met this. I've met the singer, the guitar player, and the bass player of the band. Um, because uh, the bass player had a band I think it was called Soul Motor when I was living in Sacramento. Frank Hannon had his own band called the Frank Hannon Band, and uh, the lead singer, which I think his name was Jeff Keith, you can always see him hanging around the bars there. I think you, at one point he worked as a DJ at a strip club in Sacramento before the band reunited and uh, started uh, doing tours and making albums again. So so I always, if I see their vinyl out there, I usually get it and I never seen a 12 inch single from them for the song Getting Better. It's on the Geffen label. There we go. Not the best song from Tesla, Getting Better, but it's, it's still a good song. I've always liked it. Uh, like I said, it's not their best, but it is a good song. So this was a cool find. Um, really dug, <laughs> really was surprised to see it. I, I didn't know they had 12 inch singles to be honest with you. I thought they just put out records and toured and that was it. <laughs> so I was pretty surprised to see it. And like I said, they only wanted a couple bucks for it. So what the hell, right? Almost finished here, folks. Uh, another 12 inch single from the band Duran Duran for Notorious. <laughs> uh, it's the extended mix and the uh, 45 inch single mix and the song called Winter Marches On. Why not? <laughs> and it has a cool label on it too. Custom label. There's side A, side B. So pretty cool that. And I always dug that song. This was only $2. What the hell? <laughs> uh, it's nice to have a copy of this song on vinyl. Uh, I've seen the album itself on vinyl a few times, but never got it. All right. So, really cool to, to find this one, so good find. And the last one was a Record Store Day release from OMD, Orchestra of Maneuvers in the Dark for Julia's song. This is the dub version. This came out on Record Store Day uh, a few weeks ago, like a week or so, two ago. And this is an import. Uh, was really surprised to see it in the store. Um, I snatched it up because I know I would never see it again. I didn't want it to get away from me. Collecting almost anything I could find from OMD on vinyl, this was a good addition. I haven't listened to this one yet. Um, it's from the album uh, Junk Culture. Junk Culture was recently uh, remastered and released on CD, so I need to get a copy of that as well. So, but real, real good addition to that. Well, that's going to do it, folks. That's just my Amoeba finds. <laughs> and uh, it's a pretty big stack of records. Um, I also visited three other stores in uh, L.A. I'll do a separate video for those. Um, some good finds there as, as well. Stores beyond Hollywood. So that's it. That was my, uh, my visit to Hollywood and Amoeba Hollywood was such a good find, was such a good album, I mean, such a good finds and such a great store and oh, I had just the greatest time there. I wish I could just bring a bunch of people from the VC, we can all meet, buy a shit ton of vinyl and go get pizza and beer afterwards and show each other our stuff, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be a great outing, maybe one day we'll do that. But anyway, that was my adventure at Amoeba Hollywood. That is such a great store. And it, other than seeing Amoeba Hollywood store, it was great to hang out on uh, Hollywood Boulevard at night. Uh, the, 
the bright lights and the big theaters and the big buildings and the hot chicks and fancy cars <laughs> and the freaks that are out there. Uh, I saw some good stuff in Amoeba Hollywood and, and Hollywood Boulevard, so it was, it was a fun trip. It was a fun getaway for a few days. I had a blast. Anyway, that's going to do it here, and I'll leave you with this.